today we're looking at this pretty clean Husky 350 I picked up a while back. It does run, but I can tell that the intake boot clamp on it was leaking, so I never did put it in a piece of wood. And honestly, I forgot that I had the saw until I seen it sitting on a shelf over there earlier. And I was looking for something to grab to make a little bit of content. So, <laughs> like, well, let's get this 350 and see what we can figure out. Um, I don't know if I'll just repair this or I'll just go ahead and do a, just a simple woods port on it while it's a port. Just a, like a base gasket delete, maybe dial in squish, maybe clean some of the ports up. Um, I ain't even 100% sure what cylinder this has. It'd be cool if it had the uh, later 353 style cylinder. And that screw there ain't the daggone easiest thing in the world to get to. But this saw's fairly clean. I don't really think it's had a whole lot of time on it. Um, with style air filter and it just actually made me realize that I have a 346 over there that does run that really doesn't need a lot but I've not really shown on the channel um, so that's something else we may dive into as well and it's looking like I'm pretty sure we got an open port cylinder down in there uh, yeah but that's just fine uh, you can make power with those I've seen some Pretty strong running open port 350s out there. Um, it just all in getting the compression up and getting the port timing right on them. This one's so clean it would be nice to do a OEM 346 cylinder on the very, very clean saw. Um, it's like the chain brake guts are about all but out of it. So be a good reason why the chain brake wasn't working. Some of them still there, but like there's a lot still missing. Um, let's see. Spring over here. Looking like this cylinder will come up out of there with the handlebar on it. That's always a good thing. Less stuff to take off. Should be a plastic bushing behind there and there it is but it's easier to just take this cylinder off to fix that intake boot and we're going to fix it by putting a, a 372 style clamp on it I've done that I've ordered the uh, actual partition and clamp I don't have one of those here that I know of so we're going to go the 372 intake boot clamp route, which works just fine. Most people know that. Um, let's see, guys. Get the carburetor stuff loose off of it. I'm thinking this one might have had some issues with the kill switch as well. We'll just have to see. I ain't 100% certain on nothing about it. I remember firing it up and having to really, really richen up the uh, low jet to get it to function properly. And all I'm doing there is you got a grommet there and a grommet there. To put those back on, you just fish a pick or a little screwdriver in. Pop them back on. Um, usually right here, if you go wide open throttle, in most cases you can get that throttle rod just to pop up out of there. You might have to grab a little pair of needle nose to get in and get it sometimes. Which I may have to on this one because it's, it's moving around there pretty easy. Oh, I think we got it. Got him out of there. Not a big issue. And it seemed like uh, something was locked up in the handle of this. And I got the saw. I got it at about what? it was worth at the time. I've seen people pay a lot more. Um, guys don't pay a big deal of money for one of these. Like if it's running, it's worth 200 bucks at the most, really. If 
you got a 346, you know, 351, 353, yeah, that's a little different story. Those are a pro level mag body saw. Um, worth a little more. I've heard of some guys paying some pretty insane amount of money for a, what I would have called a junk 350. Um, they're a good saw, but they're not, you know, not nothing real great and spectacular either. Um, can make them pretty powerful though. Alright. Um, this does not have the... I swear I think I have one of those over in the other shop somewhere, but it does not have the... bracket that comes off of the muffler and goes down and bolts in like a pro level saw and that's a big downfall to these is the muffler will come loose it'll leak and it'll melt the oil tank I actually have a mint set of cases for a 350 and uh, what else uh, handle I think I've got a handlebar Got quite a bit of parts for one over in the old junk shed. Just didn't have enough to put a whole saw together. I actually thought about scrounging around and sourcing up some John's Red top plastic because I do have a John's Red starter cover. Maybe dyeing it all black. Um, and putting one together that way and guys I understand something like this is as boring as watching paint dry totally get it <laughs> but when I get some more exciting content y'all I promise I'll share it with you guys but right now I ain't gonna lie to nobody I'm really really losing interest in this hobby um, it just is what it is It's went from a hobby to a small business, and I never ever wanted that or intended for that to happen. I don't care to do stuff for buddies and do work and help out or family members. Um, but I've bought so many saws in hopes that you know they may spike up the amount of con the amount of views the content I get is getting or channel growth and you know my channel does okay um, we ain't paying no bills with it or anything but it does okay and it is classified as a small business when you file your taxes if anyone didn't know that and mine's went in the hole two three years in a row ever since it was monetized it is what it is But I've got way too many saws over there. You guys have seen. I've been pulling saws off the shelf. Some sold. Uh, some I haven't shared to YouTube. Quite a few of them I have. Sometimes that helps aid in selling the saw. And sometimes, I don't know. It seems like, seems like I had better luck on eBay before any of it was linked. YouTube, honestly, is what's weird. It's like one don't want to work in hand with the other or something. <laughs> Could just be this awesome economy we're in right now, too. I think that's a lot of it. Not everybody's got three, four, five hundred dollars laying around to buy a freaking saw. Let's see, wiring. We unhook one wire, it should be one on top, right there. We'll get it to push off. It's not wanting to push off of there very easily. One right there. That one sometimes can be a pain to get in. For me, anyway, I don't know. Well, we took the fuel line off, I thought we did. Um, now we're still hung up on the throttle rod. It's hung in that little 
There we go. It hung up in my air filter elbow. Looked like the base gasket came off with it. Boy, that's a baby cylinder, guys. <laughs> that one's a baby. We have some Husqvarna awesomeness there. <laughs> that one's actually held real nice. You guys seen that. Um, you shouldn't be able to do that. And I swear it looks like they would have put some grooves around that. They didn't. Um, as I've said a million times on here, if I had a dollar for every time I said it, it is what it is, guys. Um, base gasket, hell, I could clean that one off and reuse it if I needed to. Um, that's it. That's a cylinder removal for my Husky 350. And these are technically a clamshell design. Um, you have this little partition right here. It's four screws come in from the bottom of the crankcase. The polymer body of the crankcase houses half of the bearing and then you have that aluminum block that sits down. Um, it's got a name. It just sits right on the tip of my tongue. But um, we'll just call it an adapter block for now. But um, or a riser, whatever you want to call it, but it does have a name. I just can't think of it. And it kind of goes down and caps over the other half of the bearing. Um, weird design. The bearings have that rubber seal around them like your old polands and poolands and whatever you want to call it. We call them a poland here. Um, craftsman's. Uh, you know, what most of those paper towel throwaway saws that people call them. These have a bearing similar to that. Um, it is a big bearing. It is a 6202 bearing, just like most of your 2 Series or 3 Series Huskies use and a lot of other saws. But it's got that rubber shell, the seal that goes around it. Um, right now, I'm going to come up with what I'm going to do and we'll bring you guys back and let you know. Okay, guys, so. I've about decided I've kind of gotten away from what made this channel popular and uh, that was showing you guys simple things you can do. I understand not everybody has a lathe and wants to drop a bunch of money on a lathe so depending on where everything's at on this, tempted to just do some simple mods, put it back together and just call it scent, see how it performs. You know, I know how they perform like full tilt. Done several of the 353 style cylinders, done um, several 346 styles. You can get them to run pretty dang spicy. Um, I've done one with the cylinder, and I think the seller I bought the piston ring from ripped me off, sold me a used ring because it never would seed in and build any kind of compression at all. Um, I have that piston and cylinder over there already. If I wanted to just go get that cylinder and bolt on this, I could, I guess. It's already ported, ready to go. We're at 33. That's about common. It's probably a little bit tighter than that because that's a little thicker solder. It did not completely mash flat. Um, I've got some actual 30 thou electrical solder out here. Um, we cut a piece of it and cut it down and you can probably see in the camera that stuff's a lot thinner. And I'm betting it just barely, barely touches that. Like I said, it didn't completely mash the other. There was still a little bit of resistance. And I cleaned the top of the piston, cleaned the squish band. And there'll be some of you guys cringe at this, I know. Like, you gotta leave, use it. And it's just barely touching that. Um, so we could probably call it 30 thou. Let's see, it did put a little bit of an imprint. 
30 thou. Um, so a lot of the times you want to use a solder that's small. I have three different sizes here, actually four. I've got another uh, roll of solder. It's, uh, I think it's about 26 thou or so. It's on a big roll. I've got it Harbor Freight. But, um, we're just going to call it 30 thousandths in a row with it because, you know, it wasn't completely mashing that 60 thou solder all the way. We read 33, so. Um, yeah, it is what it is. We've got 30 thou squish. We can work with that. Could I chuck it in the lathe, turn it down to 25, which is where I would set it? We could, is it gonna make a difference? Not really, you'd never tell it or feel it. Um, people might argue that, but from 30 thousandths, probably all the way down to 20 thousandths, it's probably gonna be within like a couple of percent, or probably like less than 3% of power you're gonna increase. Um, you might pick up five PSI from that on a short stroked engine. And I'm not here to argue with anyone or anything, but I'm just stating what I know and what I know to be true here. I don't have a reason to lie about it. Um, I've got a bunch of mandrels over there. I've got the lathe. I could cut the band. I could cut the base and really, really jack it so up. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to yank the flywheel off because I do plan on doing an ignition advance very slightly, probably two to four degrees um, and I'm gonna put my degree finder over here because I don't really want to fool with taking the clutch off of it um, it's not that it's that big of a deal but we got to pull the flywheel anyway all right guys port map was about as expected uh, the squish we covered that 30 thou 107 on the exhaust roof 123 on the uppers 70 and a half on the intake um, those are good numbers to work with this is a 48 and a half cc saw very similar to a steel 026 and bore and stroke it's identical um, a 260 has a little bigger bore and 024 has a little less bore of 42 millimeter and if it's an old school 024 it even has a shorter stroke but little off topic little not we're talking saws um, those numbers are really good to work with. What are we gonna do with them? Not much of a damn thing. Um, I like the exhaust roof there. Uh, we're gonna do our cleanup on it. We're gonna widen it a little. We're gonna polish it. Not go crazy, but gonna give it a little polish because it had a ton of carbon I had to sit and scrape out of it when I was cleaning up the cylinder. Um, the uppers may not even touch, uh, may just maybe pitch the angle on them just a little bit but then again may not even touch on my lock where they're at um, intake port i know for a fact we can push this as far as like all the way to 80 not have a problem it'll idle fine around amazing um, and give it a bunch of rpm it will give up a little bit of torque going that far but i think what we'll do is we're going to shoot for like 75 76 and just keep it simple but i am letting you know you could push it as far as 80 and it'd be just fine um, so that's what i'm going to do next is uh, going to do what little work we're going to do to the cylinder and i'll bring you guys back and give you a look all right port work super simple um, widen the port clean it up didn't go crazy with the polish it's probably a 220 finish honestly i mean 100 percent sure what i used but it was nothing real fine not too bad uh, as far as the upper transfers go uh, this is optional but what i've done um it looks like i ground the piss out of them but i really didn't um timing on them should be really really close to the same they might be a degree you know to the better but uh what i done is went in and kind of trenched out in the very very back it gives it like a slight ramp to where the charge will shoot 
kind of down on top of the pistons that's coming up but as you can see maybe they're still angled back toward the spark plug I guess is the best way to describe that uh, done the same all around um, I've decided you know port timing will be moved what we moved by doing what cleanup or if you want to call it flow work um, intake port what typical deal there I normally do I did lower it what little bit you can you could probably go <laughs> hitting the camera and knocking it over would be real good it is widened as you can see it's got a little bit of a shape to it I don't go as drastic as some people but kind of my method of widening it kind of leaves that I don't know maybe a bean looking shape to it I guess um, I just feel it kind of helps kind of angle things down into the case where it needs to be people say aiming it into the transfers um, that's not possible technically you're aiming it down into the bottom of the saws where you want the charge to go when it comes through the intake you want the piston as it comes down, compress it in the bottom end of the crankcase and up through the transfers. You're not aiming the charge into your transfers. It's just, if you think that's how it's doing it, you don't understand how these work yet. Um, if you're still going in and hogging a bunch of things out and widening and a little bit of case match up, a little bit of unshrouding, that'll do just fine, but if you're going in and you're hogging the piss out of things, um, you still don't technically understand how this thing works. And I don't mean to sound like a know-it-all or a smart ass, but I guess I kind of am being one. But um, you want to feel charge in the bottom when it compresses as the piston comes down, shoots up your transfers toward the back of the combustion chamber it loops around and out the exhaust ports why it's called a loop scavenging engine um, they are different two strokes that don't loop scavenge that just shoot straight through but that's not what we're dealing with here but um, I'm gonna end up making one of the chop aways cutaways hacked up chainsaw just to kind of try to explain things a little bit better and I'm sure somebody you know there's been dozens of those done but might as well give my take on it and that cylinder might look a little discolored compared to where it was at because I've run it through the ultrasonic twice if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner pick one up um, when I'd first shown that you know we technically couldn't fit a case half in it off of a big saw but uh, if you leave the lid off, you can get a 394 case half in that thing. You have to kind of run it on one side 10 minutes, flip it over, run it on the other side. Does an amazing job. But um, anyway, the next thing I'll show you guys is how we mount that 372 clamp up to that intake boot um, and kind of go from there. Let me give you guys a look at that partition and stuff. I can figure out what in the world I've done with it. Um, brief intermission. I was on the completely other end of the table from where I needed to be. It's the story of my life. But what we'll do is trim this nonsense off of it. We're going to leave this because it has to seed in here in the back of the saw in order for it to stay intact. It's really, really a piss poor design, honestly. Um, there's a little nipple comes through here, goes into the bottom of the cylinder. Your impulse line comes around into the carb flange, and that's how it gets its impulse. Uh, it's a piss poor design, but hey, it works. All right, guys, I'm final numbers. I just bolted the cylinder down just to double check. Uh, 106, 122, 74. I think that little saw is going to rip. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know I should have done machine work, but I wanted to do something simple for people watching it that aren't blessed enough to have a lathe or don't want to clutter their shop up with one. But um, anyway, I'll bring you guys back when I get that intake boot done. I've got to pull the carb assembly apart. Um, 
Unfortunately, but it's a good thing too, uh, this thing has limiters and no one's taking them out. So I'm gonna get that done and I'll bring you guys bad. on these limiters. You can see there's the little hump, I guess, or the detent. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a double cut and I'm gonna grind those down smooth and then I'm gonna put the cap back over that setup that goes on it and should be good Got to go. Those ground off smooth, the cap placed back on and it looks completely stock. Now that is not what I'm used to seeing when tearing down a 350 and I've tore down a bunch of these. Uh, that's a 359 intake boot and ring. I don't know that maybe some of these could have came with those on it or maybe at a dealer repair we just threw it on it but it did have that old style partition and i swear i don't think any of the 359s maybe the 357s may have had it uh, any of the ones i've had here and torn down had that newer partition and that little squeeze together metal clamp that everybody loves um, but that's a definitely a 359, 357 intake boot and ring. Um, the 350 intake boot somewhat smaller and the ring that goes in it's kind of a long, kind of a sharp thing if that makes any sense. But we do have that wall bro carb that everybody loves. Um, we'll just have to see how that does. It was running but I could tell it had a real slight, you know, air leak on it and as you guys seen how tight it was on the cylinder to pull off that explained it but when we get this back together and then I'll give you guys and another look. what that looks like uh, you could probably really really try and forcefully pull it off because that uh, intake the outside of it's not ribbed which I feel it should have been would have helped things a lot but uh, you'd really be working at it and may rip the boot but Anyway, that's a lot better than what came on those. Okay guys, time we can advance. There would be stock. That little bit of movement, probably two degrees. What is this gonna do? It, it'd make it a little more snappy. It might give it a little more RPM. Muffler mod we just opened up. What was there? It's a hollow can muffler. It'll do just fine. All right guys, we switched cameras. I ran into this used carburetor. It has a Zama EL42 on it now. Um, sounding pretty good. find something to cut on and bring you guys back. Right, so we have to crotch this tree. Um, this stuff usually pretty hard after it's set for a while. Um, ain't like hickory but uh, it'll be a good test and I hope this chain's sharp. It looks short, feels short but I guess we'll see. Bye. Uh -huh. 
just to give you guys a look at that chain um, it's one they call an X cut but it's one of the ones you buy at Lowe's um, you know it's a consumer chain not a professional grade chain 20 inch um, I think I fouled that thing back honestly um, same one I had on Simple Men's 55 same barn chain set up um, it's really aggressive out of box really grabby which it's got a really good pull to it now I've done one just about most of hands off and um, that didn't end out too well but uh, cuts pretty nice pretty smooth cutting chain it ain't no race chain or anything and that thing would be pretty fast to say a 16 like a 3 8 set up on it maybe an 18 um, or even like an 18 inch with maybe an 8 pin on it um, it is torquey you can probably see that I can lean on it um, pretty hard but uh, for what it is that's a nasty little saw and again not a lick of machine work done um, I really honestly wouldn't put a lot of money against my 340 with the Warhawk 346 cylinder beating it um, numbers are really similar this actually probably has a little better numbers in it than that but it had a little bit of machine work. I think I sanded down the, it was a, it's called a right bearing riser. Um, there's another name for it, but everybody calls it a bearing riser. But there you have it, guys. If you can pick one of those up cheap, just kind of copy what I've done there. Just clean up. Um, and again, when you clean up a port, polish it, it's going to make it bigger. Uh, I did widen it quite a bit. Not to the max or anything, but um, she was widened. Uh, the intake port kind of done my deal there. I normally do um, just simple build, guys. Anyone can do it. You could have done that the Dremel. You could have skipped the step with the transfer ports. Um, but I've shown ways you can get in there and get to those with the little flat round diamond abrasives. But to do what I've done to that. Um, it might be a little tricky. You could probably do it with a flex shaft and a ball head, but again, what I done was trenched out the very back of the upper transfer port to give it a little bit of a ramp towards shooting down on top of the piston. Um, and the last cuts I made with it, I fattened it up a little bit. That thing spinning way up, probably over 14 grand before, but still had a good clean blubber, but. Um, I don't know if it came on it, somebody let me know if you've seen that, but take note it does have a uh, 359 intake boot and technically a 359 carb on it now. Um, still running the 350 air filter set up, but it's the air tracked on it's about the same size, so I don't know that a 359 air filter would help much at all, maybe in a full blown, full tilt situation, but a um, little time in advance, single port on the muffler. Um, you could take that out and put a big load of wood on your truck with it and probably work all day with it. Um, but anyway, guys, that one will be up for sale after I run it a little bit. Um, interested in it, just let me know. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching, and everybody have a good one.